In this video, we visualize a patient with a type 3 thoracoabdominal aneurysm with extensive involvement of the visceral arteries. We visualize a 3D reconstruction and the simultaneous axial slices of the CT scan. In this case, the right renal artery has an early bifurcation, which brings an extra challenge to the case. Both iliac and femoral arteries have normal diameters. Based on the CT scan, we did a comprehensive study of the proximal and distal diameters of the aorta, the diameters of each of the four visceral arteries involved, and the approximate clock position of the origin of each one of them, as seen in these planning snapshots. We also assessed the distance of each visceral artery in relation to the point of the proximal landing zone. The complete plan for this case consisted of one proximal thoracic stent graft to cover the descending thoracic aorta and create a regular proximal landing zone, one custom-made branch stent graft with four branches, one bifurcated stent graft, very similar to the regular one, except for the absence of a free-flow stent. Since this graft will land inside the distal portion of the branched graft, only barbs are necessary for an appropriate sealing and avoid disconnection of the system. Regular iliac stent grafts complete the set of stent grafts. These measures will then be used to design a custom made stent graft with four branches for this patient as seen here in an actual picture of it before sterilization. The access to the arterial system is regularly performed through bilateral transverse incision, two centimeters above the inguinal ligaments with control of both common femoral arteries, as well as a third incision to access the distal portion of the subclavian artery, which will later serve to introduce the visceral bridging stents. After the thoracic stent graft is deployed, creating a proper landing zone and sealing the proximal portion of the aneurysm. The branch graft is deployed so that each visceral oriented branch lands around two centimeters proximal to the origin of the arteries. While the branch stent graft is in place, an angiography is performed to confirm the position of the stent graft. Each of the visceral branches is marked with two golden marks at the base and three marks at the distal point. After the implant of the branch stent graft, we proceed to the abdominal bifurcated stent graft, following the regular instructions.
In this case, we perform separate arteriograms to localize the aortic and the common iliac bifurcations. with a latex balloon, the entire system is then dilated. At this point, the femoral arteries can be reconstructed to allow perfusion of the inferior limbs sparing the patient from the risks of metabolic consequences of ischemia. And an aortic arteriogram is performed, where we can see an extensive intentional endoleak through the stent graft branches that will provide visceral perfusion while each of the branches is catheterized and the bridging stents are implanted via the subclavian access. Once the subclavian is dissected, we introduce a 12 French sheath up to the descending thoracic level, followed by a longer 9 French sheath that will actually guide the bridging stent grafts into the visceral arteries. Parallel to this 9 French sheath, a 0.014 wire was inserted in a through and through manner, exiting one of the femoral arteries just before its suturing to provide a more stable sheath system. After that, each of the stent graft branches is catheterized and the nine French sheath is inserted, followed by the catheterization of the visceral artery. We then deploy the bridging stent. Up to the moment, we have been using a system comprising of a covered, self-expanding stent, followed by the inner deployment of a self-expanding bear stent to prevent kinking of the first. The sealing is completed with appropriate ballooning and verified with 3 milliliters of contrast arteriograms. We also like to use 10 milligrams of isosorbide mononitrate before finishing each vessel. Especially in this case, the patient presented an early bifurcation of the right renal and at first sight one would think of excluding one of the renal arteries but this would cause at least 50% loss of the right kidney.
we then decided to try a double catheterization in a kissing stent technique, deploying two balloons expandable covered stents inside the first self-expandable covered stent to save the whole kidney. The control showed the complete perfusion of the right kidney. The sequence of procedures is repeated for the mesenteric artery to deploy its bridging stent through the subclavian axis. The measures in the arteriogram make sure that an adequate sealing of the visceral artery is achieved without the loss of important mesenteric branches. Again, we first deploy a covered self-expandable stent followed by a bare self-expandable stent for flexibility and kinking avoidance. The arteriogram shows a good result as well. Finally, the branch for the celiac trunk is catheterized with the sheath, followed by the selective catheterization of the hepatic artery. Both stents are deployed and ballooned to seal, followed by a control arteriogram. After all bridging stents are in place, we check the complete system for endoleaks and to confirm the perfusion of each visceral artery. In this video, we can analyze the six-month follow-up CT scan of the patient, where we confirm the complete exclusion of the aneurysm without evidence of endoleaks and with complete perfusion of all the visceral branches of the stent graft.